Hey, Jonathan here at Colfax Math. Um, today I'm going to do a short video of reviewing trig um, for calculus. So a couple things you have to know for exact value problems is you have to have an isosceles right triangle down. Isosceles means two sides are congruent. So that angles opposite them are congruent. So you have a ratio of 1 to 1 to root 2 and a 30-60-90 triangle where the side opposite 30 is 1, side opposite 60 is root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. So you have to have those triangles down. Sine is equal to the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent is the ratio of the opposite over the adjacent. And again, my mnemonic device is SOHCAHTOA. And that helps me, that helps remind me what those three Greek words mean. So if I ask you the sine of 45, it would be the opposite, one over the hypotenuse root two. The sine of 30 is one over two. Okay, then we look at the unit circle here. The unit circle by definition has a radius of 1, so the hypotenuse in all of the triangles it creates will be 1. Use my mag measure here, lock that in place, draw a 10 inch. Okay, so a unit circle has a radius of 1, in this case I drew it with the radius of 10. The reason why everything's split into 360 is it's divisible by every one of these angles, 30, 60, 45. So the reason why they use 360, it was closest to the number of days in the year, but easily divisible by any of those measures. So you always rotate off of the x-axis counterclockwise. Wherever you end is your terminal angle. And then your reference angle is a positive acute angle to the x-axis. So if that was 45, if my angle was, say, 120, my angle would be 120 degrees. My reference would be back to the x-axis, and it would be 60 degrees. Positive, acute, less than 90, and to the x-axis. So if I had an angle of 210 degrees, I'd be down here in the third quadrant with the reference of 30. Okay, um, all the way around 360, halfway 180, and wherever you stop, it's just, if it's an exact value problem, it'll always give you one of these references, 30, 45, or 60. There are also imaginary triangles as well, uh, and I'll talk about those in a little bit. So you could do exact values in both degrees and radians. You could do either exact or approximate. Exact means without a calculator, so it'll be a known triangle. Approximate means with a calculator. Okay, so let me just do one quick exact value problem in degrees before I talk more about radians. What is the exact value of the tangent of 135 degrees? So you got to start here, you go to 135, a reference of 45, 40. yep, reference triangle, 1, 1, root 2, don't forget your negatives, tangent of 135 would be negative 1, sine of 210. Don't forget your negatives. You rotate 210, you stop, you got a 30 degree reference, 1, 2, root 3, write in your negatives. Sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, negative 1 half. Tangent of 330, there's your angle, your reference angle, 330, reference of 30, 1, 2, root 3. This is a negative, no, this is a positive over positive down negative. What did I say? I said tangent of 330? Tangent of 330, you go back to your tangent, 
opposite over adjacent, negative one over positive root three. Tangent of 330 is negative one over root three. Yours, Nina? So those are exact value problems in degrees. Let me do exact value problems in radians now. Remember, circumference is equal to diameter times pi. If I were to measure my circumference in inches and my diameter in inches, right, I could divide both sides by diameter in inches, and I could see that these will cancel. So pi is a ratio of circumference to diameter. The units are inches over inches. Inches cancel, and pi is unitless. So the whole point of going to radian measure is that it is unitless. So when I work with radians, it is unitless. I write the word radians in there to let the person know that it's unitless. But if I don't write any units, it's implied it's radians. So that's the reason you go to radians in the first place. Let me draw that circle again. It's all good, 10 inches. So circumference is 2 pi r. r, again, is 1 because it's a unit circle. So all the way around the circle is 2 pi. So all the way around is 2 pi. Halfway around is pi. Now I have to use my fractional measurements and just keep splitting it up. So half of pi is pi over 2. So I have one half, one, one and a half, two. And then I could cut those in half too, so I'm cutting half of a half. So this is a quarter, pi over four, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, and back to eight fourths. So I can split it into quarters. Those are my isosceles rights. So I could ask you to cosine a pi over four. Cosine a pi over four is saying, what is my adjacent over my hypotenuse, where my arc measure is pi over four, or the angle contained is pi over four. So cosine of pi over four is one over root two, is the exact value of it. You with me there? And then I could split this thing into thirds and sixths as well. So if I split it into thirds, now I have pi over three is one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds. Six thirds. And if I split it into pi and a thirds like that, then this is a 60 degree reference, and now I'm working with my 30, 60, 90 triangle. So sine of pi over three is root three over two. I could also split the pi into six, so I could make it one six, two six, three six. Four six, five six, six 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 six, seven six, eight six, nine six, ten six, eleven six, and back to twelve over six pi. So I noticed a ton of information right here, um, and this is just a quick trig review of the unit circle for calculus. So if I were to ask you to find the cosine of 5 pi over 6, you would recognize that as 150, a reference of 30, a 30, 60, 90 triangle. You know the angle is 30. The side opposite 30 is 1, 2, root 3. Don't forget your negatives. You're going right to left. So cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2.
those are the exact values. Then, how's that? Yeah. Let me throw out one, one more little piece here. Yeah. So the, the imaginary triangles, there are two ways to look at the imaginary triangles. So not only can you have a 30, 60, 90, 45, but you could also have zeros and 90s. So one way to look at it is a coordinate. This coordinate right here is over one up zero. This coordinate right here is over zero up one. This coordinate right here is over negative one up zero. And this coordinate right here is over zero up negative one. As you go over, that's an adjacent leg. So that adjacent leg will always be cosine. As you go up, that's an opposite leg. So the y value will always be sine. So if you ask the cosine of zero degrees, it would be one. The sine of zero degrees would be zero. The tangent, I erase that, the tangent opposite over adjacent. The tangent of zero degrees would be opposite over adjacent, zero over one or zero. Tan of pi over two, Tan is opposite over adjacent, would be undefined, that is correct. The sine would be one, the cosine zero, the tangent undefined. At pi, sine would be zero, cosine negative one, tan would be zero over negative one or zero. And that's why that graph goes through zero. And then that's why tangent has a asymptote here and here. The other way to look at it is an imaginary triangle with the adjacent equal to zero, I'm sorry, the adjacent equal to one, the opposite zero, and a hypotenuse one. It's an imaginary triangle, it's a representation that doesn't really exist. You good on those? All right, and then let me just draw out just the first few identities in trigonometry. So just like what we said there, if I have a right triangle, the adjacent would be cosine, the opposite would be sine, and then unit circle out would be one. There are three more trig functions besides sine, cosine, and tangent. So we have SOHCAHTOA, sine is opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine the adjacent over the hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent. There are three reciprocal functions, cosecant, secant, and cotan, and all they do is flip the sides over. So cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite, secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent, and cotangent, I flip those over, it's adjacent over the opposite. I remember, while well, these make sense, tan and cotan sound like they're opposite of each other, or reciprocals. And then I remember C and S go together. Cosecant and sine, secant and cosine are reciprocals. C and S, C and S. So if the opposite, so I could define my first reciprocal identities in that way. I could say cosecant, cosecant is equal to the hypotenuse over the opposite, which is sine. So cosecant is equal to one over sine. Secant is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent. The adjacent's cosine. Here are the two quotient identities. Tangent is equal to the opposite, sine over cosine. And then cotan is equal to the adjacent over the opposite, cosine over sine. Those are your quotient identities. These are your reciprocal. You can write these a lot of different ways. Sine is equal to one over cosecant. Cosecant times sine equals one. Tangent equals one over cotan. Cotan equals one over tan. And then lastly, you have your Pythagorean identities where you're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle where you say A squared, which is cosine squared, 
plus b squared sine squared equals 1 hypotenuse squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I could divide through both sides of the equation by cosine squared. Cosine squared over cosine squared is 1. Sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. 1 over cosine is the reciprocal. 1 over cosine is secant times secant or secant squared. So it's my second Pythagorean identity. Then my third Pythagorean identity I divide through by sine squared. So I divide through by sine squared. Cosine squared over sine squared is cotangent squared. Sine squared over sine squared is 1. 1 over sine, 1 over sine is cosecant times cosecant or cosecant squared. So those are your three Pythagorean identities. So you have six reciprocal identities, two quotient identities, and three Pythagorean identities to get started. So again, the intent here isn't to teach a whole class in trig, it's just a quick overview of the unit circle and trigonometry for calculus. All right, well, thanks for watching. This is Jonathan at Colfax Math. Hopefully that might help review a few things for you in trig. Uh, if you liked the video, hit like, subscribe, and thank you for watching. I'd like to hear your comments below.